we're going to talk about a different subject today called centripetal force. Previously, we said when an object is moving at constant speed, but in a circular path of radius r, it has an acceleration, and the magnitude of that acceleration is v squared over r. Although the object has constant speed, the velocity vector is changing over time because its direction is changing. And we know that an acceleration vector is equal to a delta v over a delta t. So if, in fact, the velocity vector at a time t2 is different in direction than the velocity vector at time t1, then there will be an acceleration. In the case of constant speed, but a, vector, a velocity vector moving around in a circle, the acceleration vector was derived to equal in magnitude v squared over r, and the acceleration vector points back toward the center of the circle. Newton's second law says that whenever there's an acceleration a, there must be a force in order to cause this acceleration. And therefore, there must be a net force, f net, equals mass times acceleration, in this case equals mv squared over r. And the force, like the acceleration, will point back toward the center of the circle. Such a force is called a centripetal force. If we think about a tether ball being spun around on a, a pole, it can ex execute circular motion around the pole. And if it does so at constant speed, the value of the acceleration vector, magnitude, must be equal to v, v squared over r, where r would be the length of the string. Intuitively, we know that what is responsible for the ball being able to move around in a circle is the string, or the, the fact that the string can pull on, this, on the ball. And in fact, the direction of the force applied by the string, or it's called its tension, points back toward the pole, just like the centripetal force that we discussed a moment ago. If there was no tension in the string, or if we could cut the string, we know that the ball would fly off in some direction. The string, in this case, is the force that supplies the centripetal force required for that centripetal acceleration to exist. If we look at the circular motion of a ball at the end of a string from overhead, the velocity vector is constantly changing in direction. It may start out pointing straight up, moves at a later time over to the side, and a later time straight down, and a later time over to the left. The acceleration vector, and hence the centripetal force, always points back toward the center of the circle. And because there's a force, a net force, given by the magnitude of the centripetal force, there is a change in speed, velocity, or a change in velocity direction. When there's a centripetal force, there will be an acceleration equal to mass times the acceleration is equal to some net force by Newton's second law. If we let go of the string, or the string breaks, that means there's no tension in the string, and there's no force, or no net force. As a result, by Newton's second law, there can be no acceleration. And we know that when there's no force, a, an object in motion tends to stay in motion or move at constant speed, at constant velocity. That's Newton's first law. And what would happen if we let go of that ball, string? At that moment, the ball would keep flying off in the straight, hand, straight direction, tangent away from the circle, because velocity vector, velocity as a vector has to equal a constant. It's important to remember that velocity is a vector. It has both a magnitude and a direction. To say that the velocity changes means that there's an acceleration. But in this case, we do not necessarily mean that the velocity magnitude changes, only its direction. For the velocity to, exchange, to change over time means that there must be an acceleration. And by Newton's second law, there must be a force, a net force. And it must point in the same direction as the velocity vector a, excuse me, the acceleration vector a. If there's no centripetal force, the velocity will be a constant, and the ball will go in a, in a straight line path, because both the direction and the magnitude of the velocity, in that case, would be constant. 
and the ball would, at the moment the string breaks, instead of traveling around in a circle like this, it would zoom off to the side. 